Okay. So today what we're going to do is uh, kind of the same thing that we did last week, except we're just going to be solving quadratics now by factoring. You guys did a really nice job on the factoring assignment. I left feedback on Blackboard. Um, so you can take a look at that. But we'll whiteboard it up again today. And... What we're going to do is, this is topic seven, and it's uh, solving quadratics by factoring. Okay, so when we solve quadratics, we have like different ways that we can do this. So I'm just gonna like start by making like a little organizer about different ways to solve a quadratic. So to solve them, we have many ways, but these are the ways that we're gonna focus on and this will kind of go for the rest of the year. But to solve quadratics, we can factor. That is one way. And that's what we're gonna work on today. Uh, another thing that we can do is the quadratic formula, which we've done this year, which we'll review. And then another way is by graphing, which we may or may not get to but we've done this on our calculator a little bit, so that's what we'll do. We'll do these next two after spring break. Okay, so today we'll focus on solving by factoring, and we're essentially gonna use the same, you know, methods of factoring, which is why we did that last week. And basically, instead of just factoring, we're gonna go one step further to solve, to find the x-intercept. So what does it mean to solve? That means to set your equation to zero. Visually, it means where your parabola, your quadratic hits the x-axis. All right. Okay, sometimes it's already factored for you. So this first one is pretty simple. Uh, 3x minus one, x plus five. Okay, so your first step always when you're asked to solve is to make sure that you're equal to zero. That essentially means letting y be zero. That's where you hit the x-axis. And so this is already a factored quadratic, right? If we multiplied it out, it would be a quadratic. And so if it's already factored, we don't even need to factor it, right? We just set each factor to zero, which you, some of you might be able to just do in your head. But if we set this one to zero, and then this one to zero, we can solve for our two solutions. So here we'll add one and divide by three. And then over here we'll subtract five. So our two solutions are one third and negative five. And so that just means that if you put that in your calculator, if you graphed it, you know, this parabola would hit the x-axis at one third and at negative five. This is a big idea in math, right? Setting it to zero. We talked about how important zero is because it, it like separates positive and negative values. Um, but setting something to zero, right? This idea is pretty pervasive in math. So it just means you're multiplying two things and getting zero. That means at least one of them had to be zero. So it's called the zero product property when we set each factor to zero. Okay, let's try another example. This one will be a little bit more difficult, but not too bad. So x squared minus 11x plus 24 is zero. So this one is not factored yet. 
So this is a quadratic, right? It's equal to zero. That means it's ready to be solved. Um, is it factorable, right? A times C, one times 24. So yes, there are two values that multiply to 24 that add to negative 11. And they are negative three and negative eight. We did not need to use the box method here because A is one. You could still. Hey, Ben. All right, so then we'll set each to zero. And then we can just do this in our heads, right? So x minus three equals zero gives us a solution of three when we add three to both sides. x minus eight equals zero gives us eight as our other solution, our other uh, root or x-intercept there. So this isn't too bad, it's just one more step. Okay. So same thing. Number three, n squared plus three n minus 12 equals six. So for this one, we're not already equal to zero. So we need to get equal to zero in order to solve. So in order to do that, you wanna keep the squared term positive as best you can. So we don't wanna mess with the left-hand side. Instead, we'll mess with the right-hand side and subtract six. When we do that, that's setting our quadratic to zero. So we'll have n squared plus three n minus 18 is zero. This is factorable. So I want you guys to go ahead and factor this. Hey, Simon. All right, who would like to let us know what we got here? Can I please? I heard Brendan, but I am frozen. Six. <laughs> oh, negative, negative six and three. Okay. I, I can't do. All right, let's see. It should be n plus six and n minus three. So we'll have negative six and positive three as our answers. I can't do anything yeah. on the screen right now, so let me... It was so fun. Gotta love Zoom today. All right. Hmm. Okay. Um... Okay, I got back. That was weird. Okay, here we go. Okay, when we set them each equal to zero, we'll have negative six and positive three as our two solutions. Okay. Number four, we'll have three X squared minus 12 equals zero. All right, our first step always with factoring is to factor out a GCF if possible, right? And we also wanna make sure that we're equal to zero even before we factor, which we are. 
So we have a GCF here of three. Our other problems did not have a GCF because our first term was just the variable squared. So we couldn't take anything out. We recognize here that we're left with a difference of squares. And so our difference of squares will factor into x plus 2 and x minus 2. Now, technically, we have three factors here. We have three, the greatest common factor. We have x plus 2 and x minus 2. We have three factors. But again, we've talked about that this, this year. Not all factors will provide a solution, only the factors that have a variable in them. right? If you set 3 equal to 0, that's not accomplishing anything. Um, but if there was an x in that factor, we would care. So I'm just going to show you this doesn't accomplish anything. That's like an x as in not accomplishing anything. And if we set our other two factors to 0, they will give us solutions. We'll have negative 2 and positive 2 as our solution. So we can write our final answer as plus or minus 2 if you want to be mathematical. Again, if you're ever confused on if this gives you the right answer, you can always plug in, like, let's test 2, right? So if we plug 2 back into the beginning, we'd have 2 squared, which is 4, times 3, which is 12. 12 minus 12 is 0. So it does work, right? It does give us 0, which is pretty nice. OK. All right, we're going to solve some more. So 6n squared minus 18n minus 18 equals 6. Go ahead and get that set up to begin the solving process. We need to do something before we can even factor. Okay, so I just heard back from the IT person who said Zoom, like passwords are now a thing. So just FYI for your other classes, I don't know, just, I think it's a thing because there's been people like hijacking Zoom. I don't know if you guys have seen that, but it's like the new thing to do apparently. So, I would just be on the lookout for like passwords from your other teachers today. I was not aware of this, so. Okay, who can share with us our first couple steps here? Track six. All right. Thank you, Jacob. What did you do next? And then you get six n squared minus 18 n minus 24 equals zero. Awesome. Okay. Someone else. Factor out six. Awesome. So what are we left with when we do that? Um, n squared minus um, 3n minus 6. Or 4. Um, Good. Cool. Jackson, was that you with an um? Yeah. Okay, what's next? Uh, then you, uh, do you do the box? Sure, you can. Do you need to? 
Um, I don't think. You totally can. I don't mean to okay. steer you wrong. No. It's going to be more work. We only need to do the box method when we have a quadratic trinomial, which we do, but when A is not one. Oh, yeah. So um, mm -hmm. Go ahead. You got to... Uh, um, Would it be x minus 3, x minus 1? We want to multiply to negative 4. Uh, multiply to negative 4 and add to negative 3. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, x minus 4, x plus 1. Great. Okay, awesome. And then our final step is to set each factor to 0. We have three factors again. Six is a greatest common factor, but it's not going to provide a solution because it doesn't have a variable. So we'll set n minus four to zero and n plus one to zero, giving us solutions of four and negative one. Awesome. Okay, uh, I have three more for us today to get through. And the way that your assignments will work this week is I will, it's just gonna be like last week, you'll have one assignment um, and I'll email it out to you today. I'll also put it as an attachment in Blackboard, just so you have two ways of getting it. It's gonna be eight, I think it's eight problems and it'll be due Thursday by the end of the day. We're basically going to do the same class on Wednesday, just because I, this whole password thing. So I will uh, let Mr. Busman know. Ah, I'll have a couple new like examples and stuff. So if you feel like you want to join and ask questions or it'll kind of be like a more open format. Um, but if you don't attend on Wednesday, I won't take it as like, a participation grade or anything, that's fine. Um, but if you do attend on Wednesday, then you can ask questions about the assignment and stuff and we'll just keep going over the same thing. But if you feel okay with it, then you should be fine. Okay, let's keep doing these last few here. All right, so they are gonna get a little more difficult. So 10x squared equals 27x minus 18. Get that one set up to solve. Remember a good rule of thumb is to keep the squared term positive. So probably move everything to the left is your better bet than moving the 10x squared to the right. Oh. <laughs> All right, so when we subtract 27x and add 18 to both sides, We're essentially just moving stuff over. So on the right-hand side, we'll have zero. And on the left-hand side, we'll have 10x squared minus 27x plus 18. Just because we, we don't really have any like terms to add them to, we're essentially just like swapping sides. So when you swap sides, you swap signs, right? This term went from positive to negative because it swapped sides, vice versa with this guy. Okay, GCF. The smallest number is 10, so factors of 10 would be potential GCFs, 2, 5, or 10. Not for 27, those don't work. 
or 18. So we don't have a GCF. So instead we have a quadratic trinomial where A is not one. This would be a potential four box method. So to see if it's factorable or not, we have to do A times C. So 10 times 18. So are there in fact two numbers that multiply to 180 that add to negative 27? I want you to see if there are, in fact, those numbers. Negative 12 and negative 15. Nice. Thank you, Michael. Cool. Okay, so it is in fact factorable. So we can set up our window pane box method here. Write our first term 10x squared goes first. Our last term 18 goes last. And these middle two are breaking apart negative 27x in the form of negative 12x and negative 15x. So these two numbers are just our specific way to break down negative 27x. We're essentially backwards foiling because factoring is just backwards multiplication. Again, just a visual way of, of factoring. All right, then we're gonna factor out the GCF in each column, or each, yeah, each column and each row. So with our first column, 10x squared and minus 15x, we'll take out a positive because our first term is positive. So we'll take out positive 5x since that's their GCF. Our next column begins with a negative term, so it has to be negative, what we're taking out, or minus. 12 and 18 have a six as their greatest common factor. Going across the row here, 10x squared minus 12x, it's going to be a positive thing we take out since our first term is positive and 10x squared and 12x have a two, two x. x in common. Mm -hmm. And then down here, a minus three for those same reasons. Great, so these are the factors. So we have 5x minus 6 and 2x minus 3. So we have factored, but we haven't yet solved. So to solve, we set each factor to 0. If you want to start trying to do this in your head, you can. I think about it as adding 6 and then dividing by 5. So this one gives us 6 fifths. You can think about this as adding three and then dividing by two, so three over two. Cool. Questions on that one? That was probably the most difficult one we've had. Okay. All right, I have two more for us. Sixteen x squared minus nine equals zero. And five a squared minus three a equals zero. 
So they're already both set to zero. First think of GCF, then think about what remains and how to factor that. There may or may not be a GCF in one, one or both. So I want you guys to start these ones. Okay, I just received news that there will be passwords for every class, just FYI. So my password will always be this six digit code. If you wanna write it down, it'll just be this for every single meeting that we have. So maybe just have that written down like on a post-it for each class by your, however you log in. That would be helpful. All right, would someone like to share how they did seven? I haven't heard from some of you. Ben, Sylvia, Josiah. What are we supposed to do when there's no, uh, like for this one, I'm kind of confused. For number seven? Yeah. So you don't have a GCF, right? Right. And then you see like what's left. So what's left is just the whole problem, basically, right? Is it a binomial or a trinomial? Binomial. Binomial, right? So is it a difference of squares? That's your question for if you have a binomial. No. Think again. Yes. Yeah, this is a perfect square. This is a perfect square, and we're taking a difference. So you can factor it using your difference of squares. Okay. Okay, so you wanna take the square root of each term, and then one plus one minus. Would anyone like to get us started on number eight? while we work on seven. GCF and A out of it. Cool, GCF and A out of it, cool. All right, what remains? 5A minus three. Okay, so then we look at what remains. It's a binomial, so it has potential to be a difference of squares. Is it a difference of squares? No. No, it's not, it's just a difference. So we are done factoring with number eight. We have two factors and they both have A's in them. So they will both provide us solutions. So our first factor is A, so we set that to zero. That's a solution because it's already solved. And then 5A minus three equals zero. We'll add three and divide by five. So the solutions in number eight are three fifths and zero. Okay, going back to number seven, what do we have for our difference of squares in here? Four X plus three, four X minus three. Good. So the square root of the first term is 4x. The square root of the second term is 3. And so we have 4x plus 3, 4x minus 3. So it is now factored, but it's not yet solved. 
Hey, Christian. So we set them each to zero. So when we set this to zero and this to zero, they'll both be three fourths, but one's negative and one's positive. So if you want to write your answer as plus or minus three fourths, you can, or you can just write them separately. Either way is fine. I like that because it's less writing. Okay. So again, I know I'm repeating myself a lot, but I just want to make sure you guys know all your classes will now require passwords. Of which I found out during our class today. It's been a fun learning experience for us all. This is my password that will continue through whenever Zoom makes another update, I guess, without telling me. I don't know. So write this down. And um, you will have to have passwords for your other classes today. It's not able to be disabled by your teachers. So I just look out for emails and stuff like that from them. Because we had issues with today's class, uh, I'll only give you, like if you came to class today, you'll have full participation for the week, that's fine. Um, if you'd like to join on Wednesday, we're, I'll just take more questions and do some more examples and show you how you can check the stuff on your calculator too. I will email you your week's assignment today. It will also be available to download on Dropbox or on the on Blackboard, sorry. It's not going to be due till Thursday at 3.15. Um, I think that's kind of it. I have office hours today, 2 to 2.30. All your teachers do this week. And spring break starts Friday, so that's pretty cool. We don't, so we don't any... have to come to – do we not have to come to class on Wednesday, you said, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Log in. I'm still going to be doing class, but I'm going to do right. some of the same and then a couple extra and take any okay. questions. Okay. So Thank I would you. recommend looking at the assignment today. I'll send it out um, in a few minutes here. And uh, if you have questions, just log in. Yeah. Yeah, that was weird today. All right. I am going to end class. Um, if Christian, just stay on for a second. You're not in trouble. I just, you just got here. So I just want to chat with you real quick. Okay. Okay. All right. All you guys right. are good to have go. Good if you day. don't have any questions, you too. Bye. <laughs> Hello.